we need some people that will rest from doing evil stuff, from killing, from kidnapping, from murdering, from adultery, from fornicating, from um, trash talking, from um, from doing immorality. <music> But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and a perfect and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon his the earth. Very interesting, guys. Today's topic, we are back with the story of Noah. Continuing. Why did God destroy the earth? Interestingly. Um, and don't forget to like, you know and subscribe to this channel we are continuing with that story the noah story because somebody mentioned that on my comment on a video that i made last time uh about it was like a, a reaction video to a music video made by the alphabet community so that's why i'm making that video on this story Funny, we just read. Um, I want you guys to think about this one. Um, how is it? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna assume. So Noah is seven generations from Adam. Yes, Noah is seven generations from Adam. Actually, know what? Let me actually. Let me let me actually look it up with you guys. I think I know I think it mentioned about that. Let's see if I'm right or wrong on this one. So guys, um genealogy is the one thing that I really didn't like. I not that I hate but I'm like I don't really let, uh, take my time on uh when it comes to genealogy. But, um, okay, so verse number four it talks about Adam. So, Adam begot, oh, what do you mean? Okay, okay, so you guys can see it. So, let me make it a bit bigger for you guys. Oh, too big. Yeah, there you go. So, we got Adam, verse number four Adam begot Seth. That's the first generation after Adam, and then after that. Seth begat Enos, that's second generation, and then, of course, Enos begat sons and daughters, okay, and then Enos begat Canaan, not, that's not Cain, that's Canaan, so there is Cain and there's Canaan, so we have Adam is the first one, okay, so we have um, Seth, Enos, Canaan, that's third generation, and then Canaan begat Mahalalel, that was the fourth generation. And then Mahalalel begat Jared, that's five. Jared begat um, Enoch, that's six. And then Enoch begat Methuselah, that's seven. Okay. That's seven. Okay, I guess he wasn't number seven, not then. Oh, Methuselah is number seven. Number eight is Lamech. Noah is number nine. 
Yeah, so um, Noah is number nine. Okay, so Noah is number nine. All right. So as you guys just saw right now, um, Noah is number nine in the list. So, so there we go. Noah was number nine. Now imagine you are nine generation. Now remember, nowadays I think a generation is what twenty five years, but back then, um, people lived eight hundred, nine hundred years. So there must have been at least this earth must have been people living on this earth must have been at least uh, two thousand years before the flood, because Adam lived. 930 years Jared lived 962 years Methuselah lived 969 years Enoch lived only 300 years and then was taken up to heaven Noah lived at that time he was living before the flood he was um, 600 years old so people on this earth must have been at least 2000 years span before the flood at least because of all like yeah it could have been at least 2000 years so um you know we had nine generations each of them living about 800 and plus so there could be more than 2000 years before the flood now let's go back to the story because we gotta go back to the story uh the story but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Very interesting, guys. It is very interesting. Not interesting that God said the thought or the imagination of the thought of the people were evil continually. But yet, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let's see why that would be the great thing i like about bible hub is it also gives you um the meaning of certain words let's actually see funny what does noah mean let's click on noah noah it will tell you so what do you guys see noah is it means rest funny huh it's very funny that <laughs> now think about it think about that one noah found grace in the eyes of the lord and noah's name means rest people now are giving their children's names that don't have a meaning to it and back then even still this day in the in those region the middle east area people will give name based on what it means you know moses moses means rescued from water you know so based on based on what happened in that in the parents life that's what they that's how they give their children's name um noah means rest why would that be let me tell you why because when the bible says that the imagination of the people at that time and their thoughts were evil continually think of you right now living in an area where people are, be, are doing evil things continually tell me do you think that you're gonna be um in a how do I put it that way? How do I put it? Do you do you think you are living in a in a in a in a good state of mind? No, you are basically in a state of unrest because you're always worried: Are they gonna bomb my house? If I walk out of my house, are they gonna shoot me? Are they going to kidnap me? Are they going to try to? If I have a daughter, are they gonna try to? rape my daughter you are continually on a state of unrest 
So of course, Noah meaning Noah means rest, and interestingly, Noah means rest, and he was living according to his name. And what what God is basically telling us is, we need some Noah in these days. We need some people that will rest from doing evil stuff, from killing, from kidnapping, from murdering, from adultery, from fornicating, from um, doing pornography, from uh, trash talking, from um, being, uh, doing, I'm going to put it that way as well, uh, leaving the uh, inappropriate or um, immoral lifestyle, from doing immorality, from doing abominable, abominable things. Yeah, that's all, that, that's in there too. Um, why? The, um, when I'm in that, when I'm in that video, the LGBT people with, uh, that I made last time. Well, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? It was because of homosexuality. Yes. No, I'm not, I'm, nah, first thing first, as I mentioned in the video, you don't hate the sinner, you hate the sin. I don't hate homosexuals, I hate homosexuality. There's a difference. You need to love the person. Yes, you need to love the person, but not the lifestyle. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. Because if the people decided to repent, he wouldn't destroy them. Look at Nineveh. When they were doing abominable, abominable things, God sent Jonah to preach to Nineveh. And they repented. And God didn't destroy Nineveh. Because God is interested in the people. The same way. When I made that video on the LGBT community, um, it's not hate. I don't like the lifestyle. The same way I don't like the murderer's life, the murderer lifestyle, the liar. Like anything that you do that is bad, you need to hate that, not the person. People don't get angry because somebody is a liar. People get angry because somebody lied to them. So you don't really hate the person. You hate the fact that he is lying or she is lying. Same way for Noah. God doesn't hate them because, because of who they are. He hates them because of what they are doing. He hates what they are doing, which is having evil thoughts continually. Imagine you, again, imagine you take Noah's story and bring it into your time. Would you be okay living in a way where you're always worried about are they gonna shoot me if I walk out my outside my outside my house? My dad just told me recently a, a woman just walked out of a church going home and they shot her in the head. Why? No idea. Would you be okay with that? No, you wouldn't. And the funny thing is, or the worst thing is. The year before, she buried her husband, and now she's dead. Now there are three kids without a mother and father. Again, people who have a problem with the Bible, it is because they don't know how to apply the Bible in their lifestyle or in their time. So this part is looking at it in this time. Let's compare Noah's situation with today. Noah means rest. That means God is like saying to the rest of the people, Hey, look at Noah. He is resting from lying. He is resting from thieving. He is resting from adultery. He is resting from um, killing, from having bad thoughts. Why don't you guys want to look at his example and follow that? Because that's the right path. That's the path that leads that leads to life and not death. But of course, people don't want 
people have a free will so God cannot force them to choose the right way right let's keep on moving so Noah means rest so that means basically that means what that means because he is because he is doing the right thing God will have pleasure in that oh one thing i want you guys to know um there is a deception right now going on you realize that in the time of noah it was a small a tiny bit of people that were saved against a lot of people that were dead um let me tell you something um you do you see that in every single funeral they say oh the person is now in heaven rejoicing with the lord let me let me say this to you it's, a lot of people will be a lot, of, a lot of people a lot of people will be shocked when they see that it's only a tiny number of people that will be saved compared to those that will be lost okay so when somebody tells you that, oh, the person is dead now, he is in heaven with Jesus Christ smiling, don't believe them. Because the Bible never said when you die, you go to heaven. You go to the grave. You go to heaven when Christ comes the second time. Now, can Jesus resurrect anybody at any time? Sure. But don't think everyone who dies just goes to heaven. They go to the grave. And most people are not going to be saved. It will be a tiny number. Just as the time of Noah. So. <laughs> now you can choose to believe in that or not. But you can go to the Bible and then study for yourself as well. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now. Interesting. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. What does just mean? Just means he is a righteous man. Look at that. Righteous man. Noah was a righteous man, meaning the person who is doing what is right. How many people do you know today who are doing the right thing? Let me tell you, it's a tiny number. Because the majority of people are not doing what is right. It's a tiny number. Job chapter 1 says, There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. He was a perfect and upright man. One who feared God, meaning loved God or respect God, and is true with evil, meaning or hate evil. People don't hate evil nowadays. They're like, let me, let me, let me taste a little bit. Hmm. Okay. I kind of like it. Yeah, that's how it begins. Just a tiny bit. Let me, let me make that one little lie. And that's how it starts. Let me make that one little fraud on my tax return. That's how it starts. People that people that start by that that rob banks, they don't just get up one day and start and when decide what I'm gonna rob a bank today. No. They start back in kindergarten or elementary school, stealing a pencil and then a pen. And then a notebook. And then oh no. And and then an eraser. And then uh, a geometric um, box. And then a notebook. And then a book. And then maybe a folder. Next thing you know, they get to high school, they start stealing cell phones and tablets and laptops. So what's next? They gotta go bigger. What's next? Motorcycle. And then break into the house. Stealing a car. Next thing you know, they are professional thieves. They've never been caught, and so they go for the big, the big money. 
the banks. It doesn't start just, ah, you know what, today I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go break into a bank. No, it doesn't start like this. It starts pretty small, and then it grows and grows and grows. So, Noah was a just man. He was a righteous man. And that means everybody else were was doing unrighteous act. Of course, he had three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. And of course, he was a perfect man. So perfect doesn't mean doesn't mean he is he didn't sin. Perfect perf now uh, funny thing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter five verse forty eight, Be ye perfect, for your father in heaven is perfect. What perfect means it doesn't mean you never sin. It means you want to live a life that is pleasing to God. Of course Satan is still there. Of course Satan because Satan is still there he will do his best to stumble you so you can fall. But when you fall, you get back up and ask God to forgive you and then again go onto that right path. So everybody can actually reach perfectness. Perfectness. Everyone can be perfect. Now, if they want to be perfect, that's their choice. They have to be willing to let God work in them so they can become perfect. For it is. I mean, it's that simple, but they think it's pretty hard. Let's move on. We're gonna. We're almost done. So he was a perfect meaning, like a complete, sound person. Pretty interesting. What's next? He says, verse eleven. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Okay. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Oh, so, the earth was corrupt and was filled with violence. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. We have not reached the level of violence as it was in the time of Noah. You know why? Because Jesus has not come yet. <laughs> That's why. When we reach the time of Noah's violence, then you understand what it was. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, as it was in the time of Noah, the same it shall be when the Son of, the, the son of Man comes. So right before Jesus comes the second time, we would have reached the violence of the time of Noah. It's that simple. Don't make it complicated. It is that simple. We are getting there for sure. But we still got some moral or some morality in us still. We're still defending what is right. The moment it becomes ugly, oh man. Whew, you never know what's going to happen. You never know. And the earth was filled. Imagine, the earth was filled with violence and only one family was doing what is right. One family. One family. Let's imagine today, let's say 10,000 family versus how many families right now we have? Uh, I don't know. But let's say we had one, let's say we have a um, hundred million people doing what is right compared to almost 8 billion people. That's how you can compare Noah's time with right now. If we can have a hundred million people out of 8 billion people, that's how ugly it was. Imagine that. 
Imagine more than 7 billion people are doing evil things. Ooh. So guys, do you think God was wrong to destroy the earth? Funny. Even then, God didn't destroy men. <laughs> men chose to be destroyed. Next time we'll come back, you will know why God didn't destroy men, but men chose to be destroyed. You know why. Because people always say, God was evil for destroying people. God does not destroy people. People chose to be destroyed. It will be the same when Christ comes again the second time. It will not be any different. Just so you know. Okay? So, guys. I'm gonna stop right here. I hope I try to make it make it as practical as it could be to put it into our time and see if we are doing any better than Noah's time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and comment if you have a question and. Uh, of course, subscribe to this channel and, uh, you know, so this was the Open Veil TV because this is the, uh, this is the Open Veil TV channel. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.